Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny from crafttestimies.com and today I have a review and demo of the Sizzix Sidekick and this is the Tim Holtz version. I bought this set on Amazon uh, because it came with not only the machine, but it also came with some assorted dies and embossing folders and some little accoutrement, which I thought would make it fun. Now, this seems to me to be the exact same sidekick as they always had. Uh, it's the same size, so it actually measures from edge to edge about eight inches, so it's not a very big uh, footprint, and from front to back, it's really less than five inches. Now, the thing you need to know, it's the most important element of the whole machine, is the cutting path, which is really only about two and a half inches. You can see here from the plates that are included, uh, it's about five inches long and it's just a little over two and a half inches wide. They also include the embossing shim, so we can play with that too, but really these are for the smallest dies, really things like sentiments, small elements, etc. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how it works. So this machine uh, has a lever which keeps it clamped down to your surface, and I was just looking for maybe a little wet nap because this works on suction. So if you want it to suck down to your table, you really should make sure it is free of any kind of dust as I'm cleaning it here. And then wipe down your table. And then you can go ahead and just flip the arm back and forth and it creates a little suction. You can see it's actually shaking the camera, but it's pretty secure. The thing I have noticed though is that every time you um, run it, it's going to lose its suction and you have to start over again. So I'm gonna start off with just a little piece of paper here and some um, cardstock. Here's the thing. Okay, so one of the things I have to admit I'm really spoiled about, and that is uh, having to hold everything down securely as you feed it in because um, it's not a magnetic plate. I also noticed that to get it started, I have to kind of push it in. It makes the arm lock up, and then I can go ahead and run it through. I also noticed that I do have to stabilize it with my hand and about the time the cut is done, it's lost its suction. So if that's a bothersome thing for you, um, it's just something to keep in mind. You may have to re-stick it down. But for the most part, it does have a nice crisp cut. Because the rollers are so small, um, you get a nice even coverage from front to back. I want to show you even here with this glitter paper that I cut, um, it didn't cut all the way through because glitter paper is a little tough, but it's a nice uh, crisp perforation so I can actually remove all of the letters. So to emboss, you kind of repeat the process, suck the machine down onto your table, place your paper inside the embossing folder on top of the little embossing plate, and then do the same thing. And again, I'm gonna feed it in until I see the arm kind of connect and then I go ahead and feed it through. This is actually a much easier thing to twist and you get like a really nice emboss. Can you see that? I did it on some pearl paper so that you can see. So it doesn't feel like it's really embossing. It doesn't feel like it's grabbing that much, but it does a nice job for that. But of course, anything you do has to be super teeny weeny to fit through the cutting plate. Now from a long time ago, I have one of these glass cutting mats. So also the smoother surface you can work on, the better your adhesion for the suction is going to be. So again, I just added a little bit of um, moisture with a wet wipe and you can get a pretty nice secure hold. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and test this out now with a little bit of glitter paper. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because it's a teeny bit tedious, but this kind of sums up my experience. So I went ahead, I wanted to use this little piece of glitter paper only to find out that it's actually too big to even go through. So I trim it back down, I put the die on, um, I kind of get the sandwich in, and then I wrestle with it a little bit because the glitter paper is a little thick, so it really didn't wanna go, and then my glass mat started to move. So I just found that this was really a little challenging for me because it's just almost more trouble than it's worth. I like a bigger machine, but if you like to travel or you need something just small, then this may be a good option for you. Okay, so 
Uh, it actually cut out the glitter paper really well. It didn't emboss it because it's kind of thick, but what you missed was this top plate literally shooting out the back because of the pressure. Um, now the good news is it absolutely stayed down to the glass mat, but the glass mat shifted around on my table. So I'd actually have to put another bit of like shelf liner underneath this to really have it be secure. But the point is, is that yes, it did cut out this Doris die. So now here's an important bit. Let's go over the swatches of the different materials I cut out. As I mentioned before, um, the glitter paper was about 90% successful. I would still wanna shim that with a little piece of cardstock or something uh, to get these little teeny weeny bits out if you wanted a clean cut. Otherwise, you might just have to do a little bit of like fussy pulling and weeding. I did try some cork stock. And by the way, I tried this on both the die that they gave me and um, this is like a very thin, delicate die from Nuvo. Yes, it's a tonic product. And as you can see, it cut it out really, really nicely. I did some manila paper. I did some watercolor paper, some heavy duty card stock, some mirror foil paper, and all of it was pretty successful. Um, again, if you're gonna get into something a little more intricate, uh, you may need to shim it. This is watercolor paper, but it worked out really well. Okay, so here's one last look at the samples. And just a reminder, this is right now uh, about $50 um, re retail price, but you can find it for less on scrapbook.com and Amazon. I'll leave some links for you below in the description area. So again, my prevailing thought is that unless you need a really small machine, you should definitely spring for a larger one. It's just easier to work with. Now coming up soon, I'll have a comparison between this and the Alta New Mini Blossoms machine, so stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and as always, have a crafty day.